Jeremy Lin finally giving Knicks fans a reason to watch on TV. But why are more of them listening to him on the radio? Ben Cohen is slowly but surely making his way to the set. Come on, Ben. Don't make me beg you. Good story. Thank you. Why, why are these fans who, for all other reasons, would want to be watching Jeremy on TV? Let's cut to the chase. Why are they having to listen on radio? Well, MSG and Time Warner Cable are currently in a contract dispute, which means that uh, the two, over 2 million New Yorkers who subscribe to Time Warner Cable uh, aren't able to actually watch Madison Square Garden's MSG network. Now, normally this isn't really a problem because right. for the last decade, who wants to watch the, <laughs> right, Knicks? But, watch the Knicks? But now they have some guy, his name is Jeremy Lin. I don't know if you've heard of him. Who's that? Yeah. Uh, oh, I think I said that. Right. And for, for, so for the last seven games, if you want to watch the Knicks and you subscribe to Time Warner Cable, your best bet is you can uh, go to a sports bar, you can, you know, do that uh, illegal thing of trying to find a live stream online, or you can listen to the radio. And as it turns out, a lot of New Yorkers are, are listening to the radio. And when they're listening to the radio, wh who are they listening to? They're listening to the ESPN 1050 feed, either on the radio. Some people are pulling out their transistors, or uh, or on the uh, the audio feed online. And this isn't just a theory. I mean, in term the radio ratings aren't out yet since Lynn really came along, but. Even in the three weeks before Jeremy Lin, uh, you know, sort of burst onto the scene in New York, um, the ratings for the first three weeks of January were up six percent over last year, and uh, the 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 page views for ESPN New York, which hosts the radio feed, uh, were bigger on Wednesday, which was the day after he hit that buzzer beater, and then obviously the day that he won the most recent Knicks game, were bigger than the day after Super Bowl Sunday, which of course the Giants won here in New York. So it, it's a huge story, and people are actually following it by, so by tuning in. So it's not just a few sort of rabid fans who are like, I'm going to get my Knicks fix however I can. I mean, this is sort of across the board. People are really, it sounds like, adjusting their lives and their schedules at home trying to figure out how to even get to the radio. And people of all ages, too. People in their 20s, people in their 60s who, who actually remember listening to games on the radio. I mean, some of the younger people have said that they can't remember ever listening to a game on the radio when they weren't in a car. Uh, I mean, this isn't something that you do, right? I mean, it's we've grown up. People, you know, people of my age, people, you know, who have grown up with these lousy Knicks teams, <laughs> watching games in HD for almost their whole lives. But people who can remember, and, and the other thing is that basketball is not a radio sport, right? I mean, if if you not listen like to baseball, the Yankees or Mets, right. right? It's very easy to listen on the radio. But but basketball, you really want to be watching television. So, uh, I, especially for those like the final three point buzzer shot. Yeah, right. when, when Jeremy Lin is sort of clearing out the top of the key with 20 seconds left and, and, and calling for his own isolation, you want to be watching that on television. Now, there's something, there's some kind of uh, nostalgic appeal of listening on the radio, but, but as a couple of people said, that, that kind of wears off pretty quickly when, when Jeremy Lin and you want to watch him. I would assume, Ben, that this puts a lot of pressure on the radio announcers to sort of not only make sure they give people enough of Lin and what they're saying, but but to be up on the drama and the narrative behind his story as opposed to just calling the play-by-play. -play. Yeah, it's funny you say that because the the voice of the Knicks, this, this guy Spiro Dides, is, is 31 or 32. He's a young guy, um, and he is also the backup uh, television right. analyst. And he said that when he's done with radio games, he's sweating and his voice is, is gone <laughs> and he's totally shot. And he right. says it's much more, it's much harder and kind of more gratifying calling games on the radio than it is on television. But I, let, let me bet this. You and I can wager. Maybe we're not even a wager against each other. The minute it goes goes back on TV, I bet people do turn back to TV. Yeah, I don't think people are going to be keeping radio the radio. Resurgence. Yeah, you want to be watching in high def, especially if you're watching Jeremy Lin. Yeah, all right, Ben Cohen, thanks so much for bringing us that.